Well, hello there. This is Cindy from the New Moon Tarot. I'm a witch and a tarot card reader. And today we're going to do a little more witchy stuff. I usually do mostly tarot on my channel. But this is a ritual that I'm doing to release. And we can do this for anything. Um, for letting go of habits or relationships that don't serve us. We're letting go of... You know, people, places, anything that just is no longer on our path. Um, if you've watched my channel before, you will know that I lost my parents um, this past year. And I'm letting go of my childhood home, letting go of my hometown, my parents. There's a lot of release going on in my life right now. So I thought I would take the time to kind of walk through a ritual with you that I plan on doing. Um, well, let's talk about some of the things I have out here. I have the death card in two different decks. It's associated with Scorpio. Scorpio rules death and it's sort of fitting. Scorpio season is during Samhain. It's during the Halloween season. Um, it's when the planet, at least in the Northern hemisphere, is going through um, death basically. Uh, the plants are dying. Uh, we're saying goodbye to the summer and the harvest. We're saying hello to winter. So there's a rebirth that happens after that. And that's essentially what I'm working for thematically for this ritual that I will be doing. You'll see that I have a couple of spiritual oils out here. Both of these are from the witch's moon. There's the Samhain oil. And... It's a very earthy, uh, spicy kind of an oil. It feels pretty fitting. And the spiral goddess oil. I think there are going to be two parts to this ritual where I say goodbye with the, the sow inside. And you can see the black crow crystal that I have. Um, it's it's going to be a death, basically. The, the death of my family, the, the death of that part of my life. And then the rebirth for the, the next half of my life and things that are coming for me with the quartz and the spiral goddess oil, which is very uh, light and full of like jasmine and uh, vanilla and it's very soothing lavender kind of an oil. So I'm sort of rambling a little bit, but these are the energies that I'll be working with. All right, I'm going to... Well, walk you through the candle magic that I'll be doing here. So, for this ritual, I'm going to do a little bit of candle magic. Not all witches use candles in spells. I find that it works really well for me. Candles and fire are very action-oriented. They spark something. So I find that candle magic is probably the easiest way for me to do something. And well, I'm a little bit of a fan of lazy witchcraft. I'm going to anoint that candle with those oils, the Samhain, the spiral goddess, use a little rosemary leaf. I'm choosing rosemary because it's cleansing and clearing. And when it comes to herbs and to herbal oils that you might use, you just need to look at the spiritual properties of them. And sometimes even the medicinal properties. Rosemary is antibacterial. So if you think about it, it's very cleansing, very clearing. I'm using tourmaline quartz. I have a lot of tourmaline quartz in my house. Um, it's black tourmaline for protection. It's also kind of that death aspect. It's very um, dark and earthy and it's it's saying goodbye. And then the, the quartz, it's very... Um, crown chakra and energizing and saying hello to the new life coming in. So for this spell, I like to use the tarot cards underneath the plate. I put the candle on the plate. I dress it with oils, with herbs, with crystals, and I'm using those two other crystals that I showed you earlier, um, the black and the white crow on either side along with a pendant necklace. Let me show you that again. So I believe in using multiple 
multiple ways. Like I'm going to anoint the pendant and wear it. I use a lot of crystal jewelry in my practice. It'll be a amplifier for the spell if you like. I'm going to have those two crystals there on either side to represent the death and the rebirth in my life, the release ritual that's going on. And I'm going to pick a well-aspected day to do this. So let's talk about days and times to do magic. So when you're doing a release ritual, the full moon is a wonderful time. It's a very powerful night, and it's followed by the waning phase of the moon where the moon gets smaller and smaller and smaller on the way to the new moon. So you're letting go bit by bit, day by day of something. I like that synergy with the full moon. Another great time to do this would be Scorpio season. As I mentioned earlier, because it has to do with death, that would be the perfect time to do it. Another time would be a Saturday. Saturdays are ruled by Saturn, Lord of Endings. That is a day where you are supposed to talk to your ancestors. You're letting go of things that don't serve you. So any Saturday would also be a good choice. If you could get a Saturday when the moon is in Scorpio, that'd be perfect. A Saturday during Scorpio season. So kind of look for these opportunities. And these are like free and easy ways to amplify your power. If you use the days of the week and the moon phases, and I will include that below in the post. Um, so that you can, well, in the the description box, so that you can see different days and times to do things. All right, and I'm going to show you one more thing for my spell. Okay, I lied. I'm going to show you a couple more things. Um, I'm going to be using the moon journal to write out my spell. I feel, I like writing it out in my own hand, I like saying the words aloud. I like thinking about it. As many ways as you can send this out into the universe, the better. You're going to call in more energy for yourself. I use the moon cycles in my practice. So in effect, this is sort of my grimoire and also sort of a magical journal that I use. Um, Let's take a look inside. I'll show you the Scorpio information. So this book walks you through the moon phases of the entire year. And you see that Scorpio is about the cycle of life, its transition, its release, its letting go, uh, being willing to change. And I feel like this is the perfect time. At this time, I will have left my hometown. I will be in a new location. I will have sold my family's home. Um, It's going to be... It'll feel good to let go of all of this at that time. So that's when I plan on doing this. But you can do this at any time that feels right to you. But this book does give you, you know, some information on the sign and correspondences and things that you can do here for it. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Now, a lot of new witches will say, well, what are the words that I say? What do I write down? And I'm going to push back on that a little bit. I do not use other people's spells. I may look at other people's spells for ideas, and that's perfectly fine, but I feel like it holds more power when it's in my words. It's my voice, my words, my meaning. Um, When I write everything out and I'm feeling emotionally attached to what I say, I think that holds a hell of a lot more power than any... um, sort of cookie cutter spell that you would find. Now it's good to look for ideas and to incorporate some of those, but I do think whatever you do, it has to be in your own voice and asking for things that are meaningful to you. So I essentially will put my first, middle, and last name, my birth date, my location, I will ask that whatever I ask for will happen in perfect alignment for everybody involved. I don't want to knock anyone off my path, off their path, or knock myself off my path by doing that. And then I ask my goddesses, my guides, my guardians. And for this, um, I've been working with the goddess Morrigan. Um, She is a death goddess, and I feel her presence pretty damn closely this entire past year. 
Um, so I will be asking for her assistance. She's all about sovereignty and change and rebirth and um, taking control of your life and that she feels good to my energy right now. Although I've worked with Aphrodite in the past, I've worked with um, Artemis, Diana in the past, but this is what I need right now. And the wonderful thing about witchcraft is that you can specialize your practice. As you grow, it grows with you. All right, one more thing I'm going to show you. So Rose Forever reached out to me and asked if they could send a bouquet. And I knew that I was preparing to do this spell. And I knew that these roses would last for up to a year. So I plan to have them with me during this entire time. Um, as you can see, they are gorgeous black roses and they are absolutely perfect for this purpose. Roses are, they're gentle. They can be associated with love. These ones are associated with death, with release, with transformation, um, saying goodbye forever to something, letting something go. So... They are pretty darn perfect for this. I think they're beautiful. They're velvety. Um, they're very much an offering for the Morrigan. Um, I will be using these as an offering for her. I will be burying these when I am done with it. So I'm symbolically burying my past, letting it go. And these are absolutely gorgeous. I will have a code below if you want to check these out. Um, I love using herbals in my practice, and I like the symbolism since these last so long. I know that my my parents and my memories and my past will always be with me, but I do have to step back a little bit from it, so they're going to be there forever for me, right? Just like these roses, but it is time to say goodbye and to let them go, and... Another idea for these would be to pluck the petals and to chop them up and add them to an oil. You can use these as an offering. I may offer um, some of these to my parents' grave as well, um, just as a goodbye, like pulling the petals apart and putting those on the grave. I think those would be another wonderful offering. And I say offering because whenever we use energy or we ask for energy, it's good to give something into return, to give something of yourself. And these are a pretty beautiful offering to give. All right. Uh, let me know if you have any questions down below. I know this is a bit of a ramble, but this is kind of an emotional spell. Um, kind of. <laughs> this is the most emotional spell I've ever worked on. And I've been putting energy and intention behind it as I go over to the home and I make decisions about what to keep and what to let go. So this is definitely the season of life that I'm in. All right. Blessed be and thank you so much for watching.